my name is Mahara. I'm with Joanna Lord. Welcome, Joanna. How are Hi, you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Sure. We appreciate you being here. And what are you thinking about RD Summit so far? It's amazing. I was just talking to a couple of people. It is big and beautiful and such a thriving, very like passionate community. Uh, so I'm, I'm loving this first experience of RD Summit. Awesome. We thank you for being here. You're really welcome to be in our event. And you were talking like just right now about how build an organization and work with growth. So th that was the main theme of your speaking. What would you say like is the best tip that you could give for someone that is starting to use growth right now and is starting to build a company using this methodology? Yeah, yeah. So I just wrapped up and there was a lot of content in the deck and presentation, but the main pieces really are that companies trying to approach growth in a new way are trying to use old tricks that they have. So they're, they're organizing the way they always have very much domain specific or they're using processes or the reports that they've always used. And companies that grow really fast, companies that are beating the competition and winning industries are trying new things. And they're reporting on different metrics. They're getting very intelligent about the way they're passing data through their systems. They're hiring different people that are approaching the channels and programs in new ways. And they're organizing differently. They're actually cross-functional. So product and marketing and engineering and analytics are coming together against common problems versus working in independent silos. So I talked through a lot of that. Um, there's a lot to it, but it, it's you know it's certainly different than how it's always been done. Yeah. And you were talking a lot about it's, it's a mindset changing, right? And probably that is difficult. It is tough. Yeah. And how? What, what are the challenges that a company will start having when they try to build this new culture and mindset? And I could spend days on the challenges. So, well, first off, it's worth saying, I get asked a lot, you know, why do such early companies seem to thrive or be so successful when these larger companies that have so much resource and so many people don't? And what you hit on is the exact point, which is the bigger you are, the more friction you're going to have against new processes and a growth mindset. And so actually, if you're a young startup that isn't too tethered to your ways or you don't hold too much of your process precious, you actually have a better chance at some of this. And I think to your question about what, if, what challenges you'll face, there's a lot. I mean, one, you're going to find people unsure what they own. You're going to feel product and engineering and marketing stakeholders wondering how they can organize, who gets the ultimate say on what gets prioritized and what doesn't. So there's going to be a friction just in kind of accountability and ownership. But there's also going to be a friction in dollars. So where do you put your financing? Where do you resource with headcount? And to get through that, you have to have really trusted, well-respected relationships between the teams. And so companies that have bureaucracy or silos or there's a lot of friction kind of in the culture are not going to be able to approach this in the right way. Um, because really it's about letting go of what you own and just solving hard problems and doing that with as much resource and as, and as efficient as you possibly can. So there's, there's a lot that comes in that, but they tend to be more cultural than anything else. And growth uh, is all about like saving time, actually spending it wisely. Yes. And what would you say about companies that now are, do not pay so much attention on their rotation process and they are starting with growth? What would you say about someone that is starting to look at retention and lifetime value of their customers? What would be like uh, the first thing that you should do before start thinking about retention, growth, and those processes that are Such so a good question. Yeah, so I always talk about growth. There's only three levers, we all know them. You can either acquire more people in, you can retain them longer, or you can monetize them in a better way. And there's you know, a lot of companies and a lot of uh, resources out there focus on acquisition. And that's the least most valuable lever, actually, uh, as we all know. And then retention's the second, and monetization actually, finding new ways to monetize your current audience is the least invested in lever of growth. But to your question about retention, I think a lot of companies that are first starting to get mature or intentional about lifetime value tend to focus on why people churn or why they leave and they obsess on you know, um, exit surveys and feedback channels and interview calls with people that have left the product. And I find that you actually get more value if you spend time on why people stay. 
and making sure that if you understand what features they like and why they use them or what about your service is so special, it's actually bringing those to the early life users, making sure that they know about these features, that they know how to use them. If you're an e-commerce platform, maybe there are certain products that your best, most valuable users buy. Can you merchandise those earlier? And so it's really about focusing on what works for the customers that are sticking around versus spending all your cycles on the many, many reasons that tend to be quite complex and hard to track on why people would leave. So I think that that's kind of like a flip in methodology that a lot of growth companies are focusing on what works versus trying to kind of focus on what doesn't. Yeah. It's more adoption than retention, right? Yeah. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of customers in all of our products and services our customers, but they're not utilizing our, our value to its fullest potential. And sometimes that's just in product marketing, that's just in adoption and education, and we can solve those problems. Sure, it's awesome. I really enjoy all the tips and you're speaking to. Thank so you. many value and information on it. And hopefully we can see you next year maybe here with us. I know, I'd us. love to be back. We would love Can't to have you away. too. <laughs> and thank you very much. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.